The formation of HOT and its capacity to respond to disasters is a volunteer-led process that has been 13 years in the making. A key moment of its creation was the 2008-9 Israeli-Gaza conflict. UN agencies and NGOs were seeking better maps. Few complete maps of Gaza were available, and existing sources had contradictory information. The OSM community stepped up to map, and organizations like Jumpstart created maps, hosted data, and distributed them. Just a few hours after the magnitude 7 earthquake hit Haiti in January 2010, the OpenStreetMap community began tracing. Within the first month, over 600 people added information to OpenStreetMap in Haiti. It became the default base map for search and rescue teams, and for responding organizations such as MapAction, IMAP, the United Nations, and the World Bank. Typhoon Haiyan was a tropical cyclone that devastated the Philippines. It first made landfall at Eastern Samar on the morning of November 8, 2013, where a storm surge laid waste to much of Tacloban City. The typhoon then caused destruction in northern Cebu, Panay Island, and northern Palawan. HOT acted as a bridge between the OpenStreetMap community and traditional humanitarian responders. This collaborative effort allowed 1,600 contributors from 82 countries to modify more than 4. million objects for this response. As part of their 2014 Ebola outbreak response in West Africa, Carto and G and MSF requested HOT to coordinate OSM contributors to map the areas where they operate. Two days later, the town of Gekadu, Kisidugu, and Masenta were mapped by the community and GIS products delivered. The effort of the OSM community grew larger over the year-long crisis and resulted in 4 countries mapped, 55 projects, 2,000 contributors, and 750,000 buildings mapped. The 2015 Nepal earthquake with a magnitude of 7.8 caused widespread damage in the city of Kathmandu and the surrounding region. An unprecedented 7 to 9,000 volunteers contributed in 34 areas, building upon the local OpenStreetMap community and Kathmandu Living Labs efforts. This allowed HOT to offer maps and data services in a variety of formats for organizations working on aid delivery and reconstruction efforts. In September 2017, Hurricanes Irma and Maria devastated part of the Caribbean. Between September 5th and November 30th, more than 7,400 contributors mapped in 18 countries and territories, over 1 million and a half buildings, and 44,000 kilometers of roads. The road network and all buildings of Puerto Rico were completed. The Rapid Team's assessment of the Netherlands Red Cross, Map Action, Crowd Rescue HQ, NAPSG, and SBTF used the data gathered to estimate the extent of the damage to infrastructure and the population affected. In early March of 2019, following the long-lived storm that caused catastrophic damage and floodings in Mozambique, Zimbabwe, and Malawi, the International Federation of the Red Cross and Médecins Sans Frontières requested HOT to activate. The request was to improve the base map in flooded villages like Murambinda in Zimbabwe and the Mozambique provinces of Zambesia and Sofala. The contribution to the OSM map by volunteers helped these organizations estimate the number of affected people, damaged homes, and location of health centers. Due to the scale brought by the crisis of COVID-19, this response became the largest to date, as it resulted in 23,000 mapping contributors working in 500 projects. Between remote mapping projects, micro-grants, local community efforts, training, and other projects, HOT supported 33 local groups in over 28 countries impacted. 
The data collected was used for prevention, response, and relief efforts. For instance, iLab Liberia used OSM to map active healthcare facilities, including testing and quarantine centers. 13 years and over 120 activations. All these numbers are not enough to properly reflect the work of millions of volunteers and how it has helped thousands around the world, but are a small reminder of the impact their work had. We have talked about the past. Now let's focus on the present and the future. With the five speakers, we go over volunteering, trainings and activation protocol, community and partnerships, information management, and the hubs. Now let's go to our first presenter, Logan McGovern in Colorado. Hi, I'm Logan McGovern. I am a GIS technician uh, by occupation and a volunteer for HOT for the past couple of years. Uh, this is a cool graphic that, that shows the distribution of disaster responses across the world. Uh, very impressive. Uh, but what's more impressive than this is all the people that it takes, all the people that have come together to make those responses successful, to uh, create the GIS data that is then put into the hands of first responders and others to help those vulnerable populations. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we do not have a map showing the exact distribution of our hundreds of thousands of volunteers from across the world, uh, from all countries, but uh, this is uh, a, a graphic showing where our current uh, roster of uh, activators um, are from very far flung from Australia to New Zealand, uh, Turkey, really a worldwide community of amazing people uh, who have, who are so gracious with their time. It's just quite amazing. Uh, anybody is welcome to get involved, of course. Uh, we have weekly meetings on the hot uh, Slack disaster mapping channel. Uh, those meetings, uh, occur at 12 a.m. and 12 p.m. UTC. We try to uh, accommodate um, as many people as possible. We want as many people as possible to attend, so we have meetings at both of these times. Um, you can also uh, look to see you know, upcoming events, uh, trainings, um, other relevant uh, workshops and such at the working group calendar. Uh, the link is on the slide there, uh, bit.ly slash hot WG. And uh, yeah, you can check it out. You're welcome to check it out. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Thank you, Logan. Now we travel all the way to Russell Devner in the Philippines. Hi everybody, welcome to the HOT Summit 2021. My name is Russell Defner and I'm the response coordinator for the disaster services team. Um, the other way to get involved is to take the self-paced training at courses.hotosm.org. Uh, you just start with the activation essentials course, which will introduce and guide you through becoming an activator. In the courses, activator trainees learn the functions that they need to, per to, to perform in order for a response to be successful. Um, the protocol defines three phases of an activation. So that's the kind of the uh, initial size up of an activation, the um, kind of continuing functions that need to be performed while an act activation is uh, ongoing, and then conclusion of the activation, uh, which is all defined in our activation protocol. Uh, right now, we're actually in the midst of a update to version two of the activation protocol. Um, so this is, again, uh, work that's being done through the activation working group, uh, being supported by the disaster, disaster ser services team. Uh, and here you see a rough timeline of an approach to getting to a version two of the protocol, hopefully at the, you know, the early parts of next year. Uh, you can also check the working group calendar that I, I mentioned before to see the upcoming workshops. And thank you. We look forward to seeing you at the next activation working group meeting. 
Thank you, Ross. Now we travel all the way to Anthony Ross in Canada. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Tony. I'm the lead of the disaster services team. And today with Claudio, we'll be sharing a bit of the disaster service and its history. Uh, first of all, just sharing the why, why do why do we do that? Uh, many of the locations vulnerable to disasters and where services such as education, health, water, and sanitation are the least accessible are often the least mapped as well. Maps are critical in the hours, days, and weeks after a disaster as they help the right people and the right supplies to get to the right place at the right time, increasing, the, increasing likewise the potential to save lives. Without maps, aid cannot get to the right places where people are. Without maps, supplies cannot get to on time and effectively to people. Without maps, often help could be that could be critical to get emergency services to save lives cannot get on time. Maps are also necessary to, to help communities on preparedness to the next disaster. HOT was founded around disaster response, particularly uh, in response to the 2010 Haiti earthquake. Uh, and disaster services remained a volunteer-led effort since. Uh, well, until 2020, when uh, three roles were hired to be dedicated full-time to disaster services uh, and its needs globally. Those three roles were myself as lead, uh, the response coordinator, Russ, who spoke before, and Claudio, our IM associate, who will be talking in a bit. Uh, together with the three staff, uh, we, de we developed the disaster services strategy for between 20 and 2023, where we worked on, on the team evolution, volunteer management to solidify uh, the great team that volunteers have been done, have been doing already, and an IM strategy to improve how we communicate uh, within our community, within the OSM community, the hot community, and externally to partners. Uh, during this time, uh, the team also supported the COVID-19 response, which has been the largest in HOTS history. And it was a great success when talking about internal coordination, uh, volunteer engagement, and participation from different teams within HOT. Many, uh, many collaborations were born from that uh, response with external partners. So, yeah, it was a great success that we wanted to share with you. On the communication side, another success that came, another big success that came out from this year was the landing page, uh, which enhanced how the disaster services communicates with um, the community and externally, the, its external facing focal point. And finally, as we move forward, the disaster services team was highly involved in the hiring of the regional disaster managers, uh, both supporting the creation of the roles and participating from the from the selection processes. And we will hear more about them uh, in a moment with Harry. As mentioned before, the COVID-19 response uh, from uh, the official response went from April 2020 till January 2021. And here you can see a bit of the snapshot of the different hot led projects projects led by commun OSM communities and micro grants that focused on growing local OSM communities. Again, it was a, a huge effort made through, def through different uh, teams of HOT and many successes came from those, from this big uh, coordination. Uh, hi everyone, my name is Claudio Los Reyes. I'm the information manager. So as Tony was saying in 2020, HOD recognized the need to create um, a platform that would uh, deliver timely information about disaster response. And well, this is how the idea of having a landing page on the website was born. Mm, the goal was to communicate ongoing work to volunteers and HOD staff to increase transparency uh, and visibility of the work done during disaster response. Um, the landing page also helps connect different parts of disaster response 
for instance, we have the products, the size of the wiki pages, the activation information products, everything is in the same place. So you can navigate it in an easier way. Just look for each activation and that would help you get all the information related to that. Um, so as you can see in this slide, we have the different uh, parts of the landing page. The first one is a map that Contour helped us to, uh, produce. It shows current activations. It shows the progress of those activations. On the right side, there is um, uh, some updates, of most recent updates from disasters that happened. Below that, we have an archive of activations. It goes back to two years ago, but eventually we will feed it with uh, the 10 years or so of history that you saw on the intro. And below that, we have maps and media, which is basically the part where we put the products from uh, partners, from HOT, and from everyone who has used data for disaster response and wants to showcase that. To wrap up our small presentation, we'd like to share some of the upcoming priorities for the team. Uh, basically, we're going to be focusing on three main pillars. Partnerships, uh, we'd like to strengthen the relationships that HOT is building in uh, during preparedness times to make sure that the data gets used and meets the and meets the real world needs, and we're able to capture this impact. Community and community building. We want to continue elevating these local communities and make sure that we strengthen the activation working group. And finally, uh, and the, maybe the most important one, the regional hubs. Uh, there. We've been putting a strong emphasis on, on a regional and local approach, and we want to continue working uh, closely with the, with the regional hubs. And without further ado, Harry will be taking over on behalf of the Asia Pacific Regional Hub. Thank you, everyone. And hello, everyone. My name is Harry Mahardika. I'm now working as a disaster service manager for the Open Mapping Hub, a humanitarian open street map team regional representative for Asia Pacific. Now, I would like to talk about what is disaster service and how they could support community and people in the region in disaster management context. There are three main words in our main purpose in disaster service, support, assist, and connect. And yes, there is no lead work in our purpose. I really want to see the initiative uh, of local actors and community that could actively lead the open street map mapping use hot tools and other open source technology in disaster management activity. For what? Of course, to increase their resilience and reduce the impact of disaster through data-driven decision making. And we're talking about support. Now I'm going to uh, give you some of the information about how disaster service could support you. There are four types of support that we created. They are partnership, mapping, capacity development, and technical. Partnership about how we could support our partner needs for disaster management information by using open street map data and combine it with the other data resources to create accurate, and reliable information and data. So they could be used for creating policy and decision-making in disaster management. Thus, continue to build relationship and networking among regional, national, and even local organization and community to provide peer-to-peer -peer support in disaster mapping activity. Mapping support is our effort to increase mapping completeness in annual map areas and complete the information that essential to be used for disaster management. The hub are aiming to support this in all cycle of disaster management, starting from the scratch, for example, doing the preparation of mapping, uh, conduct the mapping and field survey until the data are ready to use. We also aware that relaying on hub support whenever the partners want to conduct the mapping activity is not a really good thing. Therefore, by increasing their skill and capacity, particularly in open street map mapping and use the data through some of our training and workshop programs, it will create sustainability in the upcoming years for the community itself. 
We also aim to provide a learning resources where everyone could access, learn, and share the materials to the other people. And after we collected the data and upload them into OpenStreetMap, it doesn't always mean that we successfully do our disaster service. So to maximize the potential of the data and information that available in OpenStreetMap to be used in disaster management, we also provide technical support through some tools in QGIS to make disaster analysis by combining OpenStreetMap data with the other data resource. The disaster service at the hub is relatively new and we are on the state designing about our program for the upcoming years. So to make sure the support from disaster service meet the needs of the community and partners, we conduct uh, and determine the design of our future program that we will provide in relation with disaster service. So please uh, participate. I will ask you to participate in our assessment form and you can find the form in the you know, link that's written on the slide. So I think that's all from uh, my side. Thank you everyone, that was the last intervention. Thank you for taking time to listen to this uh, presentation and now we go to the Q&A.